my name is uh, Giovanni. Uh, Aimo is the family name, and my title is uh, Hot Air Balloon uh, Pilot Instructor and Examiner. So uh, for us to get started, can you just tell the kids a little bit about your background and how you got into flight and hot air ballooning? Yeah, it was by pure chance. I had never seen a, a balloon uh, in my life before. I was flying uh, aircraft since I was uh, 20 in 1966. And then in 1979, the president of our aero club uh, bought the first ever balloon in Italy. It was registered in Italy. And he was looking for volunteers to fly this balloon and then to be able to teach other pilots. We needed to have a lot of hours in aircraft, speak a good English. And I was the only volunteer in my club because uh, when other pilots have seen how complicated it was to inflate a balloon and to fly, so much work was necessary and it was impossible to steer. So I was the only one. And that happened. And the first flight I did was so fascinating that uh, in the end, uh, I stopped uh, flying aircraft. And since uh, 1986, I'm just uh, doing this uh, professionally. So I am one of the few lucky professionals uh, with balloons in Italy. Do you mind if we jump right into some student questions that I'm already getting some emailed to me? Is that okay? I'm here, no problem. So one of the kids wanted to know, did you always wanted to get into some sort of aviation when you were Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, very young, I was uh, making a small aircraft uh, with uh, paper, with uh, anything I was founding in the company of my uh, parents. And uh, when I grew up, I was collecting uh, magazines and books, uh, there was not yet internet at that time. Now it's so easy. You can find anything about whatever you want, especially aircraft. At that time, it was difficult. So I was buying books, uh, magazine in the United States, in England, and uh, collecting old magazines for wartime. So my dream, I don't know why, my dream is always to be a pilot of anything that flies. And it happened by pure chance to be a pilot of a balloon that is a funny machine that you cannot steer. You cannot go where you want. You go where the wind takes you. So what were some of the, uh, what were some of the, who were some of the people that you looked up to as you were kind of coming up in this industry? Sorry? The, who, were, who were some of the pilots that you looked up to when you were starting to become acclimated to this profession? Uh, yes, I have uh, taught around 350 students so far uh, from all over the world. And now many of them are professional pilots. Some of them uh, became uh, world champions in various uh, sports like uh, hotel airship, hotel ballooning. And uh, a few of them now have started their own companies uh, here in Mondovi or other parts of the world. So now uh, I, I see my pilots flying, for example, uh, one guy who was just a, crew member, a ground crew uh, in uh, Kenya, in Safari, Masai Mara. And now he's a chief pilot in Masai Mara, so flying passengers in those beautiful places like the Savannah, or I had other flying in funny places like Egypt, uh, Turkey, uh, so quite a few from Africa, yeah. That is incredible. One of the kids wanted to know, what is one of your favorite places to balloon in all of your travels? Well, obviously, apart from Mondovi, where I live, but... Uh, the most fascinating place is uh, Switzerland in winter, flying uh, on, in the mountains uh, in uh, this place that is called the Chateau de near Gstaad, is one of the most beautiful places in the world for flying uh, and interesting uh, from the wind that you can uh, use there going up and down the valley or crossing the valleys uh, going where you want. So this is, but, but apart this, every other place is like uh, Canada, United States, uh, Russia, uh, what is impressive for me is the enormous amount of land you have. When you go up and you see no border, you don't see the horizon hundred of miles away. This is what is fascinating for me, to have a lot of room around. That is absolutely incredible. Um, one of the kids wants to know, what kind of subjects would you recommend that kids study should they want to follow in your career path and go into hot air ballooning? Well, the, obviously, there are uh, the flight manuals and the student pilot uh, uh, handbooks where everything is uh, explained. It's not a very complicated uh, thing, ballooning, because it's very simple. We have only just one control, 
burn or not burn, that's all. And then we have a rope to pull to open the big valve on the top of the balloon. Uh, obviously, meteorology is a bit uh, difficult, it's complicated, but uh, I don't know if there are any books for kids, but there is a lot of literature too about this. And so um, could you, I know you were talking to me a little bit about this, but can you explain the competition part of hot air ballooning to the kids? Yeah. So ballooning uh, is divided in pilots that just fly for fun and then they mind to go where they want. And there are other pilots that are very keen to go where they want. For example, what I teach always to my student is just not let the wind take you where the wind wants, but try to navigate to go where you want. And this is possible, especially here. So from this, in the United States around 1970, uh, they started to do competition with balloons. Was very, the first was very easy. One balloon was taking off first and all the other were following. So the winner was the one who was landing closer to the first one. That was called the hair and hands. And then the competition started to become more and more difficult and complicated. So uh, now the competition director give us a, a lot of tasks, called tasks that are targets uh, in a big area. So we have to go exactly in this place and maybe come back uh, to the launch site or we have to reach uh, a point in the sky that is called the star task. We have the coordinates and an altitude. And this is, uh, for me, is very fascinating. And, and for example, today you see 100 uh, balloons competing in uh, Slovenia for the World Championship. And it's amazing to see this pilot going, taking off maybe in all different places and arriving all in the same place because of the simply steering going up and down. Competition, there are national championships, uh, European championship and or, or uh, South American or Eastern championship and world championship. So, but honestly, uh, we are around all over the world. We are probably 1000 pilots doing competition. It's not a very big, uh, big sport. Yeah, that's because, it. because it's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's up there. You described it. It sounded a lot like yachting or or something like that, where it was it was a very small niche of the population that does it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a small part of the aviation, but uh, now it is growing, especially as a passenger business. There are quite a lot of companies uh, taking passenger. One of the most important names is the Virgin Balloons Group that is in uh, Europe and other parts of the world. And they take uh, thousands and thousands of passengers each year. In other places, Cappadocia, where there are 100 balloons flying every single day. And they are all big balloons that can take uh, 20, 30 passengers. We call this balloon a bus. We, we don't like it personally very much. I like a small balloon with maximum one or two uh, persons because this is what I do when I'm training. I have only one, one student in the basket. But this is becoming more and more popular. And now at the end of these two years of virus, it seems that everyone wants to fly. So we have a lot of work to do. Yeah, I should say so. Um, one of the, the, I think it was this email came from a teacher, but they wanted to know what is the longest flight that you have ever taken in your career? Ah, the longest flight uh, with a third balloon is uh, at just shy of 300 kilometers taking off uh, from Mondovi, going uh, uh, near Verona, with the wind from southwest going to northeast, because Italy is in a funny position and it's very small and long. In the United States, you can take off uh, wherever you want. In the center of the United States, you go 2,000 kilometers <laughs> each way. Italy is complicated for long distance, but I did this 300 kilometers in uh, seven and a half hours. And just like a follow-up question, what is like the temperature difference when, because it's considerably colder when the higher you go, right? uh, Not that much. Uh, when I did this flight, for example, was uh, February, so it was cold, but it was minus 10, not, uh, not very cold. Uh, when I did uh, the Italian altitude record, I went to 9,500 meters and that was cold. It was a minus 32 at that altitude. But the normal flight we do, with passenger or student are no more than 3,000 meters normally. So it's not that that cold. Wow. So um, before we let you go, uh, 
what kind of advice would you have for these kids as they kind of go off in the world as someone as accomplished as you are as an examiner and an instructor and an adventurer as a hot air balloon pilot, what kind of advice would you have for them as they go off into the world and figure out what they want to do? Well, the first thing uh, is try to go somewhere where there is a balloon meeting or where it is possible to see the balloon flying because the kids are fascinated by uh, flying, uh, just looking at the balloon flying in the sky because they are so big. If you don't see one from very close, you don't imagine how big it is. Someone will look at the balloon from a distance and then when they come closer, they oh, we couldn't imagine they were, they are so big. And so you see them. And then obviously the ideal thing is try to have a flight. If you come to our aero club, no problems. We, we often do things for the schools. So we inflate uh, a balloon and show the kids how it is, how does it the technique. And then we take them in very short uh, flight in a tethered balloon so they can realize uh, what it is. And, uh, and, and then uh, there are events organized, uh, in, especially in Germany, in Spain, and in England in, in summer for kids that uh, there is the opportunity to fly with balloons and to, tr to train uh, as a crew member first, and they learn a lot of things. But normally, it, this is for people who are uh, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. Because you can you can start your license at 16 legally. You may have, for example, your balloon license or aircraft license and not yet the car license here in Italy or in that, Europe. That is some phenomenal advice. And this is interesting. I, I am going to look into taking my first balloon flight now. Um, <laughs> can't wait. And I'm sure there's others on here, but yeah, you have uh, a plenty, plenty of balloons in South Dakota. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so before or in Michigan, let, Michigan as well. Yeah. There we go. Or Las Vegas. So, uh, before we let you go, I'm going to ask everybody to unmute. And, uh, so we can all say thank you to John and then I'll end the meeting for all. So can we all say thank you to John for spending time with us today and talking to us about his career? It was thank a pleasure so to talk to you. Thank 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 you.